And we're live! <laughs> Welcome to, what is it, episode 91 of the Beastly Thoughts Show. What's going on, guys? Extended break we had last week. We couldn't quite put the show together, but this week we are back. And I'm happy to see you guys. How you guys doing? Uh, awesome. Man, I'm so happy to see you guys. I tell you, when we go a week without seeing each other, I feel like a long-lost friend is even farther <laughs> away. I've been really uh, anxious to get in here and do this show, especially after the Thanksgiving break. I'm full of turkey. I want to lay down, but before I lay down and go to sleep for the week, I want to talk to you guys about video games. Nice. Hell yeah. Feeling real good. Cooked a lot of food. You know, you cook so much food that yeah. you look at it afterwards and you're like, damn it, I shouldn't have did this, right? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I got four kids and a wife, and every time someone wakes up in the morning, they say, I want, are we, can we eat dinner now? I'm like, it's fucking 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs> Yeah, so everybody's been running in and out of the refrigerator. You know, you eat that turkey, you fall asleep immediately. Yeah. But the first so time I, I had my Thanksgiving plate, I thought that someone had, like, put dopamine or something in my turkey. I passed out so fucking fast. I thought I was drugged. I brought the family to my mother's house this week and uh, for Thanksgiving, and we got, I mean, we got the whole spread, and <laughs> we didn't have to do any of the cooking, any of the cleanup. It was just we were in and out for turkey dinner. It was awesome. <laughs> that's the, that's the, <laughs> it was like the perfect crime. <laughs> I swear it was I wish awesome. I, I wish I could have did that, Briar. My mom's in Ohio, though, so it would have been a hell of a drive. Yeah. That's a long ways away. You, you don't want to drive that far after a turkey dinner, either. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. You're right. Last year we had, like, nine, I think, nine people over to the house, plus, you know, the, the people that already live here, so... I think it was 13 people total, Whew. and oh my god, it was it was just uh, never again. <laughs> <laughs> that was our Thanksgiving experience this year. We had nine or ten people, I think. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe Thanksgiving is the first half of October, so that was a while ago. There was a lot of people. There was so much food, though. So many leftovers. Like, yeah. Oh, it was wonderful. I loved we, it. We literally, everybody just had another plate, and there's still enough probably to go for the next two days. Yeah. So it's it's been really traumatic, but you've really shot the, uh, a memory back into my head. Last week, my daughter, Nova, five years old, had her first sleepover. With oh, eight, nice. With eight of her cousins. Oh, wow. That's a <laughs> never, lot. Never, you know, that's a test in your patience, and I'm happy to say that I passed the test. I was even helpful. It was one of those moments where I wish I drank again. Yeah. <laughs> no, Nothing makes children. you want to drink like family. <laughs> yeah, but we had a good time. Uh, that was awesome. So that's great. I've been. Uh, I I haven't been playing many video games this week. I'll be honest with you. I've been uh, doing like kind of a house remodel. And tonight, just like moments ago, I just finished. You can see my hand is still filled filled with paint. We okay. just finished painting the living room, and it's done. We can take all the covers off of the furniture. We got new furniture. Uh, so I'm really excited. As soon as this is done, I'm going to take the furniture, the cover off the furniture, I'm going to go sleep on my new couch in my oh, new living room. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap on my couch. With that new paint smell, too. You can't beat yeah. that, man. Yeah, play a little, maybe I'll play a little Fallout 4 in my new living room. I'm really yeah. excited about it. Well, well, the week, the week leading up until Thanksgiving, I played very little games. So last week I probably would have had very little to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, I basically these last four days has been my time to really – dig deep into the game. Yeah. Uh, I, I told Robbie pre-show that Kate and I probably in the last three days have spent 50, 55 hours playing Fallout 4. Wow. So <laughs> what are you thinking about it? Like, how, how are you feeling about Fallout 4 now that you've had more time with it? It's amazing, man. Uh, yeah. It really is. It, I'm kind of shocked at how much it feels like Fallout 3. But it's me, the same a, game! It's a really good thing, though, <laughs> no, that it is. And see, a lot of people nitpick it, but when you look at the depth of how much you get in this package, mm -hmm. how much is going on in the world, you know, I was watching a cutscene, and then all of a sudden, during the cutscene, a war broke out behind me, and somebody, like, shot a nuke in the background, and you could yeah. tell it wasn't, it wasn't a scripted moment. There's, this world really seems alive, and every time I go to do something, there's always ten different directions I can go before I get there that take me off track, and I can waste two or three hours doing that. To yeah. me, that's really awesome about this game. Uh, so far... I love it. I mean, I feel the same way that I did when I played Fallout 3. Honestly. If you've that, got ADD, this is probably the worst game for you. Because you'll never <laughs> get it completed. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing watering off. <laughs> but the thing is, I actually found that happening to myself. Uh, it was earlier today, and 
for you guys. I'm a little sick right now, but I was not going to miss the show. No way I, I missed two weeks in a row. But um, I was going to do a quest, and then I found the, what happens in fall. I found a very interesting looking building. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a guy on the top. I said, holy shit, I got to go see what's inside this building. Then about an hour and a half later, I cleared the building. I was like, what was I doing again? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> so the game has a way of really, you make it your own. It's not like, you know, it's you go do this or you go do that. You can go do a million different things and have a hell of a good time doing it. I also yeah. played a little bit of um, Call of Duty Black Ops uh, 3. Uh, just very little this weekend. Uh, my brother got it. And so me, my wife, my son, and my brother were all playing it. Had a really good time. And that's really been my week, uh, my last two weeks, because last the week before, I was basically working the entire time trying to catch up for the break mm -hmm. uh, at my place of employment. And that was very tedious work. So <laughs> now that's over. I'm full of turkey. I'm ready to sleep and then restart this shit again in the morning. <laughs> Robbie, what have you been up to? This week, man, I have pretty much been playing nothing but Fallout 4. So here's the thing. I was like undeniably, stupidly positive about the game the first week it came out. And I actually got flack for that in the comments. And I understood where people were coming from. They thought I didn't really point out the flaws the game had, because it's definitely not perfect. There are some frame rate issues, there are glitches, there are bugs, but I have put over 100 hours into this game now. I have been playing it every single day since the game came out. Mm -hmm. I think this might be one of my favorite games of all time. This, for me, is as good as Fallout 3. I fucking love this game. I do. <laughs> I really do. I, I agree. This game is incredible to me. I love it. All right, so if we're, gonna, if we're really going to, you know, we might as well review Fallout while we're talking about it, right? Is right. I do have some issues with it, and I, 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 like you guys, do love the game. I'm having a great time playing it. Playing it. But I love Fallout 3, and I don't feel like... Fallout 3 was spectacular for a lot of reasons. You know, the story was amazing. Just exploring that kind of a world was amazing. And somehow getting that game on a console, I played it on the 360, felt amazing to me. Yeah. It, that doesn't feel amazing to me anymore. Uh, having this game on the PS4, I'm playing on the PS4. I've also I played a little bit on the PC, but mostly I've been playing on the PC, PS4. It doesn't feel like the technical achievement that it's not as groundbreaking. Fallout sure. Three did, and I have a harder time looking past like the glitchiness of the game than mm. I did for Fallout Three because I felt like it was it was so amazing that they got this game onto the last generation of consoles. I was able to look over that stuff easier, but with Fallout Four, I, I kind of feel like it's time for Bethesda to. Tighten up that stuff, you know. They need to fix their engine. I definitely agree with that. Um, let, let, let me just say this: it's not a Telltale engine, so Telltale is actually much worse. Uh, yes. But but I do see what you're saying, Briar. I have ran into those moments. I actually recorded some gameplay of me in a building, and I was going to do a quest, and I had to get into the elevator to go down a floor. Mm -hmm. But I walked into the elevator and fell through infinity until yep. I landed at the the entrance to the building. <laughs> so I did that two or three times. I'd fall and I'd look up at the, the, the underneath of the building, the undercarriage, and I'd all of a sudden land, boom, at the very entrance of the building as soon as you walk through the door. So situations like that do occur, but the one thing that kind of helps me, it helps me look past those awkward moments is how much is going on. To me, that's the feat. Yeah. You know, the visual aesthetic to me, and, and some of the glitchiness, it, first of all, it's a Bethesda game, and we all know that you know the Elder Scrolls games, Fallout games, you, you see this. This is a part of what they do. Yeah. But when, when I'm actually going through this game for 10 hours in one day, and I haven't seen the same thing twice, and I haven't seen the same situation occur twice, to me that's an amazing thing. To me, it, it feels like they spent like thousands of man hours just create, crafting this world. So to me, it yeah. kind of helps look past those glitchy moments that do happen. And hopefully they can they can patch them, isolate them because I'm, I'm guessing that these glitches are happening throughout the whole game. Different yeah, there's, places, people there's stuff different like uh, quests that just won't start. You have to like uh, you know re reload an older save to get the quest to complete correctly or stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just Ooh, I that, run that, that. that annoying kind of stuff. It's you know it's nothing game breaking. Uh, one time my character just got stuck in some geometry. I had to basically load load a previous quick save just to get out of the geometry because I was stuck. I couldn't get out. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, stuff like that. It's like, you know, with Fallout 3, I could look past it. With Fallout 4, I'm kind of like, come on, guys. Like, let's let's fix this now. 
But I gotta say, like the world they built is amazing. Uh, I really like the fact that there's like these legendary kind of random mm-hmm. characters roaming around, and any time you feel like you're in mortal danger, really, it adds to it. My wife likes to watch me play this game, and she doesn't like to watch me play any game. Awesome. Uh, but That's her sweet. favorite part is when I'll turn around and there's like a super mutant behind me. I didn't even know he was there. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and he just starts laughing hysterically because she just likes to see me upset. <laughs> um, so you know, it, it's still Fallout. It's it's it feels like an evolution of Fallout Three. It doesn't feel like you know, it doesn't feel like a whole lot of new stuff is in here. There is like the base building stuff, but I haven't found that to be too interesting, really. I'm just um, getting into that. Yeah. So like, I I do really enjoy it, but I don't think it's I, I don't know. Like, I really like it, but I, there, yeah. I, I have some but, reservations about it. Well, on a podcast you used to be on, uh, the first run, I heard you say something about the first Avengers movie compared to the second Avengers movie. Yeah. That you cannot to have that first experience again. Once you yeah. saw the first Avengers movie, of course the second movie couldn't live up to that first time that you saw all these heroes together and this world come together, all these movies come together into one collage of, of awesomeness. Yeah, and that's kind of what you're saying here, and I really do get that. I understand that because Fallout Three, it was the first time we saw a Bethesda game on last gen consoles look that good. Mm-hmm. It was completely new, open world, and it was, in its own way, for me, it felt almost as big as this game. It was huge. It was so much stuff going on. So when you take that and you go tit for tat, last gen versus current gen, it doesn't really seem like they really push the envelope. But I'm guessing that in some way. There are things that they added that the last gen just couldn't have done. Graphically, I don't think it's that much more impressive than the hey, last gen. It looks game. better. It doesn't look. It's it doesn't knock your socks off though. I, I hate I hate nice. the models. The, the the facial animations are terrible. Mm-hmm. Give, give me a female I like looking at. All these girls look like trannies. <laughs> no, nothing against trannies. Well, maybe uh, some people do like looking at that. You know, well, you why, enjoy, why are you so right? judgy? <laughs> why you gotta be so, so judgy? <laughs> why don't you open up your mind a little bit? <laughs> well, damn, you know, the mind is the gateway drug, okay, brother? That's the only thing I want to leave open here. Uh, but I'm enjoying the game. Uh, if I was, to, are we going to judge this together? Are we going to review this together and kind of come up with a number or a uh, recommendation? How, how do you guys want to do that? I'll do that. Just for kicks, we've never done it before, but I'll do it. Sure. All right. What, what score would you give it? Right, let's go up a uh, zero to ten kind of thing. Okay, so I'll go first. Okay, based on the visual aesthetic, the world that I've seen so far, the enemy types, I love, absolutely love, probably more than anything else, the upgrade system, the trees, how you do the first ten, and then there's so much other shit underneath that you can mm-hmm. kind of really craft your own gameplay experience. Yep. It's awesome. I can't wait to play it again. Um. I'm going to probably go with an 8, 8.5. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10 uh, because there are those technical issues that can pull you out of the experience. You know, you could be so submerged in the world and all of a sudden somebody walks through a wall or you fall through an elevator shaft into another world and it takes you out of that, that moment that you were in. So those issues will happen, uh, but for the most part, I love the game. I think it's really, really awesome. I'm going to stick with that 8.5. Right, Robbie, what would you give it? Uh, I would settle on around, I think, a 9 out of 10. I mean, I don't really like to give numbered scores for games because I think it's pretty flawed in a lot of different ways. I don't think a game really needs a numbered score. But at the same time, I feel like because I've explained that I love this game. I am very passionate about it, and I love it. But I can't give it like a 9.5 or a 10 because it does have these technical flaws. It has these moments where it's frustrating. They're few and far between for me, but it's still there. Like I, I feel like a 9 is a perfect place for this game. This is still an amazing game. I still love it, but it's not quite there. It's you guys are fucking close. haters. This game is an 11 out of 10. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I don't know what, what you have against Bethesda. Let's move on. <laughs> Good. Good enough. Go. 11 out of 10, everybody. Game of the millennium. Game of the millennium. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the box. Put it on the box. All right. Should we? Uh, what? Else? I I really haven't been playing anything. I've been playing uh, choose your own paint color. It's a pay to play <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> pay to play game. Very expensive. Don't like virtual reality. Pay to play. <laughs> That's a hell of a pay to play. Yeah. Shit. Uh, zero out of ten. Would not play again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh my goodness, man. Great review, Briar. So I give it 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Should we move on to some news? Yeah, let's go. Guys, we weren't here last week, so we do have a little bit of news that kind of dripped over, and we wanted to make sure we hit some of the more important little tidbits for you guys, just in case you missed it. Uh, The Xbox 360 has turned 10 years old. The system first launched on November 22nd, 2005. How fucking old are we? That's old. That's dinosaur ancient. Like, that's really old for a console. How Um, how old is the PS3 and Xbox One? Three years now, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll... It'll the PS4 and Xbox PS4, One will be sorry. two years. Yeah. It's it's two now. Two now. They're yeah. they're entering their third year. Yeah. Well, they're entering their third Christmas though. Uh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They're okay. entering their third okay. Christmas. Yeah. So uh, you know, these are I think maturing consoles, right? The PS4 and the Xbox One, they should be starting to see their second wave of really good software. I think we are starting to see it, right? I, I, I'm thinking the first good wave for PlayStation Four, where. Because if you think about it, Sony hasn't had any first-party developers release anything in the whole year. Yeah. So we should start seeing some pretty big stuff. Tomb Raider, I think, is pretty big. Um, what else w- is pretty big? It would have been, Briar. Uh, Tomb Raider only sold 301,000 copies worldwide in its first week. That's because- fucking oh. poor timing. Like, what were they thinking? Well, the, yeah. thing, the thing that's stupid, right? And this, I'll never get over this. You could have went against... Halo, you could have went against Call of Duty. Or Star you Wars. You could have went against Star Wars Battlefront. Mm-hmm. I think any of those would have been smarter. They chose the wrong one. Them would have. But they're going to bank on the most hype game of the year. Of course, Fallout was yeah. the most hype game of the year. And Fallout 4 shipped Buku tons day one. Yeah. yeah. And there was actually some similarity between those two games. There's not a whole lot of similarity between Tomb Raider and Call of Duty, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, like the the player base is actually going to be a little bit different. You know, there's going to be some overlap, absolutely. But like a lot of people who will play Black Ops are not necessarily looking for Tomb Raider, and a lot of people absolutely. who play adventure games aren't necessarily looking for uh, shooters. But like Fallout, it's an it's adventure a, game. Yeah, it's exploration. You know, it's like what what the uh, fuck were you thinking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I I hope that game succeeds. I'm really looking forward to picking it up. I'm going to pick it up probably after the holidays because I really want to play it. Everything I've heard about it is it's fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So I'm really looking forward to it. I loved the first one or the first reboot of this it, new series. And just uh, We just talked about the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 version of the game is fantastic too, Brian. Is it really? And Good. in some Good ways idea. better than the Xbox One version. Oh, it shit. Looks, yeah. It looks really? fucking amazing, yeah. On the graphical front, you know, I watched some videos from Digital, uh, Digital Foundry where they were comparing the two. And the Xbox 360 in some ways supersedes the Xbox One. It looks amazing on both. And to me, it's like Robbie just said, those this dinosaur old. That's so old. <laughs> for, the, for them to get the kind of imagery that they, they're getting out of these things 10 years later, these yeah. consoles, man. They were good they, consoles when they, they came out. Are. They were... They were powerful consoles when they came out. I remember standing in line to get the Xbox 360 on launch night. Uh, I didn't have to stand in line to get the PS3 because the thing was $600 and nobody was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, let's be honest. No one was <laughs> but I got, I got both of them at the launch. Uh, I, I liked both of those consoles throughout their history. Both, both of them had great games. The launch lineup was pretty slim for both of them, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, which we haven't had like a really stellar launch for a console in a long time. The last one I can remember is like the Nintendo 64 with yeah. Mario. Mario yeah. 64. Yeah, oh, that was a pretty God. strong one. <laughs> Mario and uh, Halo Combat Evolved on the original Xbox. That yep. was one helped launch. That one was too. strong too. Yeah, but uh, nothing else for the Xbox was strong when that game came out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kind of like the PS2. They had Tekken uh, Tekken Tag Tournament. Yeah. Did you get? Did you guys both get the? Uh, the 360 and the PS3 when they launched, or was no, it later? I got the PS. Actually, I got the PS3 first because I was I waited and uh, ended up grabbing that. I wasn't really after the original Xbox versus PS2. I had made it in my mind. I was like, no, I'm just gonna wait for the next PlayStation. Did they both come out on the same holiday? They did, right? No, nope. the 360 no. was November 2005. The PS3 uh-huh. was the following year. Oh, okay. So it's really? Really? How old are you? How do you have this information right in the front of your head? <laughs> I know it's only 2005. Gee, I, I love you, Robbie. Pretty little. Uh, the 360 was the first time I'd seen... Uh, the, well, the original Xbox did have... Technically, it could do 1080p, but the 360 was the first time I I saw it for real, and it was pretty impressive. Yeah. 
Uh, that's that was, what I was actually a little. I was a little upset that the uh, PS4 and the Xbox One wouldn't support 4K. Yeah. If you guys really want to feel old, because I just had my birthday this week. You do I every old. day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just turned 19 this week. I was nine years old when the 360 came out. That was mm-hmm. 10 years ago. I was a little child, and now I'm an adult. 10 years later, and this console is still going. That's wow. One hell of a generation. That yeah, I don't know. Basically, what do you think about kicking this kid off the podcast? Yes, what? Real... No. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of here. Ten years old, goddamn it. I was Get him out of here. <laughs> you hear that crap? Let's do <laughs> Hope to kick. Let's do up a straw poll for the chat. chat <laughs> All right. What else we got for news? I'm just kidding, Robbie. I wouldn't kick you off. All right, Robbie, you want to continue with the news, my friend? All right. Everyone prepare themselves. If you guys haven't heard about this, this move, this is a real doozy. I couldn't believe it when I first read it. Director Robert Rodriguez and John Malkovich have made a movie that not will not be seen by anyone until the year 2115. What? That's, that's not a joke. Let me uh, explain here. I have an article. Oh, the film. It's, a, it's an advertisement. Yeah, so the film is called 100 Years, starring Robert Rodriguez and John Malkovich. The release date for the film is November 18th, 2115. The film is described as being a promotion for Louis XIII Cognac, a brand of whiskey which is aged for 100 years. It's expensive stuff, too. It's like $3,000 a bottle. So basically... I got no bottles downstairs. It's all right. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so basically, they came up with the idea for this movie that wouldn't be seen for 100 years. This movie was just locked away in a time safe and is set to release on that very date. They have metal movie tickets print for that very day, so people's descendants, when the movie comes out in 100 years, they can see this movie. Like, I, I don't even know what to say to this. That's, I don't even know where to start. It's genius. It's, it's like, crazy. It's an awesome idea. Think about it. Like, like you're going to... That 100-year anniversary is going to come along, assuming the company's still in business, which, yeah. I mean, you know, who knows. But uh, you, you bring out, like, your, okay, the 100-year edition of this, you know, this 21115 or, yeah, 2115 edition of this uh, Liquors Out, and we got this promotional video starring a guy who died, you know, 70 years ago. You know, that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> like, it's a cool I think it's idea. cool, too. I would go see that shit. Yeah, yeah, I would go see it. I'll you guys go see it. I know you guys are day twenty one fifteen. We will go watch this, okay? Yeah, but who are, who are we full of? There's not going to be movie theaters in twenty one fifteen. No <laughs> way. years. There's no way there's going to be movie theaters in twenty one fifteen. Could you guys <laughs> imagine if someone made a movie in nineteen fifteen? They finished it and they held it for one hundred years. So in this day, in two thousand fifteen, we would watch a movie from a hundred years ago. Uh-huh. Like, how would that hold up? It might be cool, right? But there would be such a huge disconnect. Yeah. You, because you're looking at 100-year-old shit. So what they're talking about has no... At least with this movie, they can project imagery and make all kinds of stuff to make it seem like a futuristic film. What they perceive it might be, whoever knows. Uh, but back then, there was nothing. There would have been a guy on a cowboy. Jump, there would have been no black guys in the background. And, and, there would have been blackface. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there would have been a white guy come looking like me. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, you know, so at least in the future, they have a chance of it being something that is feasibly realistic. But... Well, what's cool, right, is I, I think it centers around, like, the making of the liquor, right? Yeah. And, like, so w- when you buy your liquor, your 100-year-old liquor, you get to watch John Malkovich tell you about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's pretty fucking cool, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> but, see, the thing is, though... Well, they see Jaron Malkovich as the like we see him as this this acting icon, right? Yeah. But but a hundred year old actor, if we didn't know who this person was, and all of a sudden he popped up in a commercial, we'd be like, who the fuck is it? Nobody. Well, cares. anyone can. Yeah, but I mean, you know, movie. Beethoven, like it, it, like in honor to entertainment genres that still exist, like uh, you know, paintings or music, you know, the really good guys that used to be around, people will still remember John Malkovich. Yeah. Right. They'll be they'll be watching them on their like hollow eyes, you know, and uh, you know watching old old movies from the hollow eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be called. They'll plug in, they'll jack in, you know, download the latest John Malkovich, you know, <laughs> library, 
<laughs> the bedroom turned into like a big ass screen. Lay in bed and just live the moment. You'll yeah. be able to talk to John Malkovich. They'll have like a virtual John Malkovich. <laughs> like John. Yes. I mean, in a hundred years, the way people are going to be watching this movie, they will have a chip be inserted into their brain that projects the film in front of them on like a. I mean, the, I, who knows how people John, are going to watch this movie. What was up with being John Malkovich? That movie didn't make any goddamn sense, man. <laughs> I, I, I hope I'm there to see it, frankly. I hope so, too. Guys, <laughs> guys let's remember this date on November 18th, 2115, where I'm going to see the All right, what episode will game. that be? <laughs> oh, God. I don't even know. This show? This movie 1,026? Gonna... I don't know. <laughs> this movie is going to get people to start getting in shape. Big John Malkovich fans are going to stop eating pork. They're going to start doing parties. <laughs> They're going to do yoga. They're going to do yoga and eat yogurts. You know, and people are going to are gonna stop drinking. Hell yeah. Oh, it's the worst <laughs> advertising campaign ever. <laughs> oh, well, imagine if you make it that long, right? You're one of these old-ass 130-year-old people, and then you go to the movie and it's shit. <laughs> you just die right there in the theater. Wait, it was just a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like fun. five minutes long, that's it? Yeah. All right, what else we got? Microtransactions have been introduced to Forda, Forza Motorsports 6. I mean, it's in every game, no. You yeah. can turn them off. It's up to... So, there's tokens in this game like there are in every game. Basically, it allows you to buy cars and stuff like that with enough tokens. Some of these cost anywhere from US $1 to $100 for 20,000 tokens. That's what bothers me right there. Can, can you uh, make any of these purchases with, purchases with in-game currency? Can you earn that? Like, I know Street Fighter V has in-game currency called Fight oh, yeah. Coins. Yeah, it's in-game, but you can, you know, pay your way to get more coins. Like, right. No, Just I mean, stop. the developers... I, I don't mind this kind of stuff, yeah, I'll be honest they, with you. They, they're trying to make their money, and I guess if a game is good enough, and you're willing to buy it, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't either, but when you charge $100 for 20,000 coins... Like, don't yeah, but you, you don't have to spend $100. That's so if they had a, a base value, the lowest you could spend was $100... Then everybody can flip their shit. But if you could spend five, ten dollars, fifteen, twenty bucks, all the way up to hundred, if you got the money to spend on a game that you like, shit, give them your money. You get what yeah. you want. Maybe some of us aren't fucking nineteen and don't have unlimited yeah, time exactly. to spend on four of the six. We'd like to see the Ferraris at the end, but we don't have eighty hours to put in. <laughs> so how about I, how about I toss the developers ten bucks so I can drive my Ferrari around like an asshole. Oh yeah. <laughs> You can do that, Briar. There you go. Nice I nice got a paint, goddammit. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, so 14.5% of Fallout 4 PC players still haven't left Vault 111. That's because the they're try still trying to get their fucking computer to run. This goddamn video driver won't work. <laughs> that is bullshit. Briar, no. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is an any file? I don't even know what the fuck this is. <laughs> Somebody's watching this shit. What is this dot INS? I don't know what to do with this. For this. <laughs> what is this dot INL stuff? I don't know where I'm supposed to put this. But... Uh, I drove man. home. Why do I need more drivers? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked up. Oh my god. All right, so. <laughs> wow, what what the hell is going on with it? Now, Briar, you have the PC version. Were you able to get out of the vault? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's oh, pretty wow. much you go. you do. It's not... <laughs> Why the hell are these people stuck inside the vault, Robbie? Get out of the vault. I'm Damn. telling you, they, there's, they got Windows 8. They can't make the fucking thing work. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got Windows, Windows 10, okay? They got, they got an old... They got an old video card. It doesn't support Windows 10. It's it's a mess out there, man. It's chaotic. Damn. It's literally the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the apocalypse of Fallout 4. I mean, it happened in our own home. But, uh, They're all Yankee fans who, who found out that Fenway Park is in there, and they said, no, fuck this. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> I almost, I'm crying. <laughs> Where the hell is my water at? Damn it. I can't breathe. Yeah, I got a drink too. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me. Uh, I'm telling uh, you, these okay, are all so... legit reasons why you haven't gotten out of the wall. <laughs> they just go to the door and look down, Brad. <laughs> I'm not going out there. I'm not going out there. All right, so 
I don't know why that happened, but that's still very interesting news. Uh, Deus uh, EX Mankind Divided has been delayed. I heard about this. Anybody surprised? I, it's by six months until August. I think that's pretty shocking to me. They delayed it that long. When, when was their, the release date before this? February 23rd. Oh. Yeah. So that's pretty long. I mean, after Square Enix did that whole augment your pre-order thing, I immediately yeah. said no thank you to this game and uh, pretty much just looked the other way. But, but whatever. Uh, six months signifies to me a huge change. Uh, does it? Or is it, holy shit, the... The, the public is, is so not. negative about this game, we need to push it back, try and, like, reset the image for this game. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll try a totally different advertising campaign and see what we can do. February's kind of packed this year anyway. There's a ton of games coming out in February, but there's no games coming out in August, just like every other year. Let's be that August release. Let's try and reset the kind of consumer uh, hype about this game and see what we can do. That's a possibility, but I'm still thinking 180 days. There's so much that can be done in that time. You can literally change huge story aspects of the game in that period of time. Yeah. You can get halfway through your Windows 10 up th- update. <laughs> <laughs> Six months. If that. Yeah, if halfway up the- <laughs> yeah, That's a long delay, but, you know, I think everybody on this show says, uh, you know, delay your game as much as you want. Just release a good one when you come out. I don't have any problem with that. I think that uh, if, if a game is delayed and it's a quality product at the end of that delay, then everybody wins. But I think that if you delay a game and it comes out bad, you're fucked forever. So just delay it as long as you need to. Naughty Dog is known for that. They'll delay a game yeah. as long as they need to to make their – because they believe in their product. They want a quality product to be delivered to their consumer. You know, So I, I think it's totally fine to delay a game as long as you're going to fix all the issues, make sure it doesn't come out screwed up, uh, and – Make your consumers happy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I remember there was a quote from uh, Shigeru Miyamoto saying like a bad game is always bad, but a delayed game can be good or whatever like that. Like once you release a game that's bad, it's gonna be bad forever. But with uh, if you He's delay right. a game, you can make it better. So that's our podcast beyond listener there. Yeah, um, I heard that that quote as well. He's absolutely right. If you if you release a game and it's fucked up day one, that's the public perception of that game. I don't care how much you patch it; it's still gonna be a bad game. You know, look, look at Batman Arkham Knight on PC. It's still screwed up. It's not as bad as it was, but public perception of that is always going to be bad. When they could have delayed it, fixed those problems, and, and had a halfway decent product. But it's still struggling now, even with, you know, supercomputers to keep up with console versions of the game. So they really screwed the pooch there for PC gamers. And forever, it'll be remembered as a, as a fucked up release, Batman Arkham Knight on PC. They should have delayed it. Perfect example there. All right, so here's another example of uh, what I think is kind of holding back this generation. I think that we, we've gone far enough with the seventh generation uh, to start moving forward. We see a lot of developers doing this now. They're making games strictly for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. They're kind of leaving the PS3 and Xbox 360 behind. But obviously Capcom doesn't believe in that. Current-gen versions of Resident Evil 6 have been listed. Wait, isn't the PS4 current-gen? Whoops. So last, last gen. gen. Last gen. Well, current no, current gen versions of a last gen game. That's what I meant. Oh, I'm totally backwards. Well, hold on, where's my... I'm start? backwards too. Okay. I get confused. I confused myself. Yeah, Forget yeah, it. <laughs> Guys, I just I snorted a line of glue today. Give me that. <laughs> All right, so current gen ver- Oh, that's going to be... That's going to suck. I Resident mean, uh, is a bad game. I'm sorry. Play your uh, HD version of a shitty game on Windows 10 exclusively. I mean, Beyond, version. Beyond Two Souls is coming to current gen as well, and it looks exactly the same. Bullshit, but I'd play that before I play Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil 6 is... I love Resident Evil as a series. I even enjoy playing Resident Evil 5 with my wife. We beat the game 40 times, I swear to God. 40. We had a lot of time on our hands that year. But Resident Evil 6 is just... It, it's the antithesis of what Resident Evil stood for for me. They moved far away from the survival horror aspect of the game. And they basically said, hey, I'm Rambo. Send me a bunch of crazy motherfuckers and let me shoot them. And that's basically what happened in Resident Evil 6. Terrible game. It was a very, very, we played through the first two story arcs. We played with Leon and we played with Chris. And by the time we got to, spoiler, Wesker's son, it was not a spoiler. It just had jumped the shark so much we didn't want to play anymore. And so re-releasing that, it's like, 
It's like throwing up in someone's mouth so they can throw up again. On, on, oh, on a new, it's on a new not play. like that. No, it's totally <laughs> like that. Definitely, it's just like that. It's like it's a beastly gamer analogy. You know the shit that's coming out of yeah, your mouth. It's totally like share and throw up. Yep. Yeah, you throw it, if throw that's up the example you want to use, use, sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> then they throw up on a brand new plate. That's all it is. Same shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's why Red Dead and GTA aren't annual franchises to take twos for Take Two Interactive. Robbie, would you like to elaborate? Because I haven't had a chance to read our complete notes. So Strauss Selnick, which is a pretty awesome name, I gotta say. Yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> CEO of Take Two Interactive. He has said that the market asks us, why don't you analyze your titles? We think with the non-sports titles, we are better served to create anticipation and demand. So you know, having a game for multiple years, building up hype. And he says, on the other hand, or on the one hand to rest the title, and on the other hand to have the highest quality in the market, which takes time. You can't do that annually. I am totally Absolutely. agree with him. Yeah. Absolutely. I wish Ubisoft would learn from this, right? Because I'm actually giving away two Xbox One Assassin's Creed games this week on my channel. I'm giving away a little collector's bundle that has Black Flag and um, uh, Unity. Brand new. I just do not like what they've done to the Assassin's Creed uh, series. And when Assassin's Creed first came out, it was on such a pedigree that you knew this franchise was going to be on the same level as games like GTA, games like, well, I guess, God of War, games that are really big AAA titles because of all the work that went into it. And then they slowly began to cram as much, as much bullshit in every single year until the story became convoluted. It was like reading Upside Down Cursive. It's terrible. Uh, and so... They need to just watch. These other developers need to watch companies like uh, Take Two, companies like uh, Rockstar. They make the biggest games. They always bring in the most revenue, and they don't release them. But once every five years, they sit for four years and stew in their own imagination, and in, in, in their own you know hardware, and, and create the best software. And five years later, it, it speaks for itself. I mean, look at GTA V, uh, an example of a game that was in development for so many years, and it turned out incredible. It was an amazing open-world game. It's so much fun. I love that game. And Red Dead Redemption, too. Oh, Red Dead. Incredible man. So incredible. I love that damn game. It is and phenomenal. They have to make a part, too. Yeah, and they took years developing that. Like, it just shows how good the quality will be. And you, can, you don't have to do annual franchises to make your money. If you wait for years and years, it'll be like GTA V. It'll be the best-selling game of all time. People will know about it. They'll Ooh. understand your work. <laughs> Just because you spend a lot of time developing it doesn't mean it's going to be the greatest game of all time. I'm just saying, be honest. Like, be proud of what you put out. Be proud of the quality. I, I don't know. I think game. there's there's places where annualized franchises work really well. I think Call sports of Duty games. is one of them. Sports games is one of them. Yeah. I think some, some series really lend themselves very well to content that is released, you know, very quickly. Yeah. Um, where you don't need a whole lot of innovation between games. I think Call of Duty is a perfect example of that. You Call of Duty is like a sports franchise. You don't need to much. reinvent it every time you, you, you bring it out. You know, you just need to get it out. Uh, and people are going to buy it. Um, or, or Madden, like you said, or uh, any sports franchise. You need to get the updated roster in there uh, because that's what people want. You want, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but the game itself doesn't change that much year to year. Uh, with a game like Grand Theft Auto, that's very different. So I think that in his situation, it makes perfect sense. Uh, but in other situations, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, see, it, and, and, and another thing is, I guess it all depends on, definitely depends on the type of game, but the games that we're talking about here that shouldn't be annualized are the ones that are heavy in story. Assassin's Creed is heavy in story. Think of a game that's annualized that's really a story-centric a story, uh, experience. Very few of them are. Call of Duty, it's got a really small four, five, six hour story. And they did that in a year. But if you've got a game like Assassin's Creed, which is, I'm, I'm going to use that, you're talking multiple hours. And it's all story. And then after you play it, you feel like, okay, this is rushed. This doesn't make any sense. Why the hell are they doing this when they, and, and not doing this? It just, to me, the Assassin's Creed series has begun to feel extremely rushed. When you, when you start to play the game and you you start to go through the world, listen to the story and how they all link together, it's just to me it, it turned into crap. Assassin's Creed is a weird thing because I would I would say there's really only been like two really good two, ones. Two to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first one I liked, but it, I mean it had some serious flaws. But I just liked it because I'd never played a game like that before. 
Uh, and I, I thought it was really cool to be an assassin, and that was a new experience. And they did a really good job in a, in a environment and a time setting that you'd never played in either. Yeah, because we all played Hitman before, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, you never played it like that. I mean, it was mm -hmm. the way the way you could move around in that world, the way you know you could climb buildings, you had to evade people. I thought it was a really fresh experience, uh, mm -hmm. and there were some serious issues with it. Assassin's Creed Two came out, and I feel like they fixed most of the yeah. issues. And then they they did a couple of like the side shoots for Bro, Assassin's Creed really Two, which I thought were pretty good. Uh, but then then f since then they've never been as good. I thought Black Flag was actually pretty cool. Was it Black Flag? Yeah, that was that was one of the. So I would say that Assassin's Creed Two and Black Flag were the two that I think are pretty good. But for the most part, those games have been pretty mediocre in general. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the last I, one was terrible. Well, this year's I heard is better, but last year's was. Unity was never God even loaded it up. Yeah, Unity was a rough launch, and that's exactly where a bad game is always bad because it launched pretty shitty, and uh, people still view it as a bad game, even though they fix most of the problems. It's still viewed that way. So, I mean, it was no, it was no uh, Battlefield Four, but fuck. Battlefield <laughs> Four was the only Battlefield Four I think we're gonna get for a long time. Yep. I don't know. Batman Arkham Knight PC is looking like it's got. Well, maybe the same amount of issues, man. That's really, really bad. Yeah, that's rough. All right, so moving on. This is news that I want to present to the world because I'm the I'm the pony of the group. Yay, my little pony. Uh, oh. PlayStation 4 sales passed 30 million worldwide, guys. Two years, 30 million. These that's things impressive. are selling like crack, man. It's still the fastest selling console of all time. It's still outpacing the PS2. It's not outpacing the Wii, but I don't count the Wii because to me that was a gimmick. Uh, but, yeah, for me, when it comes to hardcore uh, consoles, this is the fastest-selling console of all time. That's it's, great. I'm glad they're being successful. Now, let's see some games. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so many studios. Where are their games? Yeah, let's see, let's see some games. Uh, I'm thinking that they've got something behind this fucking uh, red curtain that's going to blow our socks off, man. I'm thinking that they're going to release, like, half of their first-party games for the place that Project uh, Morpheus or... You're talking about yeah. the PlayStation experience? I'm thinking That's that, later this yeah, week, actually. I'm thinking yeah. that, that because no, none of the first-party devs, that everybody knows that we're, they're work, we know you're working on God of War, something like God of War. We know what Santa Monica's doing. We know what these first-party uh, developers are doing, but nobody's said a peep. So it's almost like the, the conspiracy against UFOs. The government knows, but they won't say shit. They all are working together, and they know what's going on. And it's going to be something that kind of just takes the world by surprise the way I feel, because I feel like by now... One of these developers would have spilled some kind of beans, but very few of them have. I'm thinking the PlayStation PSX this year is going to really be something awesome. I know there's going to be a new Destiny uh, announcement there. Oh, oh really? Rare. Yeah. Really? Hey, yeah. man, I've seen a lot of uh, just Destiny in the news lately. I've seen Destiny like more Destiny commercials this week than I feel like I've seen in the last year. What's going on with Destiny? Wait, and they're trying to sell some copies. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the holidays, the holidays are coming. Let's, let's sell some copies for Christmas, man. Yeah, the legendary uh, uh, edition is available now, right? Where you get everything for sixty bucks. Yeah, yeah. It looked attractive, but I was like, "Damn, I already own everything." Yeah, you already own all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to talk though? about? <laughs> of course we do, Robbie. You guys want to talk about a PlayStation experience this week? Because we also have uh, the Game Awards coming up as well on Thursday, and then Saturday and Sunday is PlayStation experience. Do you guys have any uh, predictions for what might be announced? I just wish they did it during Thanksgiving. So I, I think I just gave you one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I, I think they're going to re reveal the price of PlayStation uh, virtu Virtual Reality, PlayStation VR. I hope they do. It's time. Um, what what price are you guys? Morpheus, you talking VR? about? It's, it's called PlayStation VR now. Oh, uh, they they changed the name of it. Yeah, it was a while ago. It was a while ago, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking that they're gonna announce it at retail for two hundred ninety nine dollars. Two two ninety nine. Yeah. I'd agree with you. I think that's the lowest they can go. I think that would be the perfect price point. At the most, it would be four hundred. Uh, that's know. pretty high, though. 400 would be rough. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. I think 299 is a sweet spot. I agree with you, Beastly. I think that'll be it. I think 100%, I'm going to tell you right now, I think God of War 4 is going to be announced because we know Sony Santa Monica is working on it. They haven't released a game in two and a half years now since Ascension. They've obviously been working on it. I think it's prime for an announcement. 
I think so. And I hope they do a lot of new stuff. I hope they have someone other than Kratos. I hope they change up the franchise finally. I don't want the same thing again. I, I want, want happy, just innovation. Oh, happy Kratos. <laughs> happy Kratos. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. How about um, we just change it up completely? Instead of God of War, we pick a different God. Yeah. It would be yeah. Venus. I can do I, that. One. That's a totally different game. Yeah, I want a sexy God of love. Yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. I want to see, see see more of Horizon, man. That game. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, that absolutely. Game cool. I mean, they got some really good stuff coming. This is going to be, I think, Sony's big year for games. They haven't really had one yet, Briar. Think about the last Sony the PlayStation 4 exclusive that was really good. Would it be uh, Bloodborne? That would be it, right? Don't say Bloodborne. No, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, it was uh, Until Dawn, which is really yeah. a Until fun, Dawn was great. a great, great game. Um it was a sleeper. Like, that came out of nowhere, and it was really word of mouth that got that one going. Yeah. It was re- phenomenally. Uh, a friend of mine is borrowing. Uh, I got the disc, so he's borrowing it right now from work. But I had a great time with it. It's one of those games you can just play over and over again. It's so many different outcomes, and you literally could save everybody, or you can just everybody can die but you. So it all depends on what you were, what you're trying to do by the end of the game. But it's acted really well. It's one of the most visually stunning games on PlayStation. I loved it. So do we agree that a new uh, God of War is pretty much confirmed for next week? Because I really think it's very uh, likely. Week, sure. Week. I would also say Fuck. Sony <laughs> Ben's game is almost 100%. I you think that's what? definitely going to I said uh, Sony Ben's game is almost 100%, I think, too. They've been working on that for a long time. They haven't released a game since Uncharted Gold and the Best on the Vita. That was three years ago? They must have something. They're ready to announce soon. I think that's another likely one. I think Gran Turismo Sport will probably be showing off. They announced that at... Um, Paris Games Week, they'll show that. And yeah, obviously Horizon and Dreams from Media that Molecule. That game isn't coming out for years, I bet. Dreams? Dreams? Yeah. The next, yeah, the next uh, Grand Turismo. Oh, GT. It, yeah, it's possible. I mean, they take their time on the franchise. They really yeah. do. So. Did they uh, push back, or have they released a de- um, have they given us a release date for um, No Man's Sky yet? June. Yeah, it's summer, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still so that's expect that's to that's hear news around April that that one's going to get pushed back. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we're shooting for February 2017. Like, it's yeah. just, that's that when game amb- is never coming out. That's when ambition is overshadowed by ability. You think yeah. get, it's just- I, I don't know. I think I think they came up with the tech and they, they're trying to figure out a, a game to put around it. <laughs> like they the actually make like this cool. game with a four-person team, which yeah, is I insane. Think, I, think, I think we've got like one person more on the BC Thought Show than they have making that game. So yeah. it's, it's one of those situations where it looks awesome. It's hard to believe what they're doing, but it's like they got a skeleton crew working on it. Yeah. You know? But maybe that's why it's taking them so long. Like maybe they're taking so much time because they want the game to be like as good as it can be. Maybe all this development will make it amazing. Who knows? Right, so the only I, thing that's got me excited that we've talked about so far, obviously Destiny, any new content DLC would be awesome. But uh, Morpheus, man, uh, getting the VR headset, uh, that would be really exciting. Do you guys think that a three hundred dollar accessory though for a console can be successful? Well, the, that's the tough. Only- the only thing that can make us successful is if they show us a game that we look at and say, damn, I have to play that, and it's only on Morpheus. Mm-hmm. It can't yeah. be a gimmick that you can you can play it with or without Morpheus. They need to have a triple They need exclusive. That's, that's why I'm saying that the first-party developers, are pro- someone, a first-party dev is making an awesome game. That's my prediction. They're making something that's incredible for, for uh, PlayStation Project or Virtual Reality VR, Project Morpheus, Morpheus, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Propheus. Uh, Jumbled up your words there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, PlayStation VR, there's a first-party developer making a AAA game for it right now. And um, mm-hmm. that was my prediction. I think that somebody's going to show up, show something crazy on the screen and say, this is only for PlayStation VR. And we're going to be like, holy shit. We have that's that's got to happen, I think, for this thing to be successful. I think yes. that P- on the PC side, they can do like a slow burn and just kind of get you know early oh, adopters yeah. and you know uh, games that are adapted for... For VR, but on the console side, I don't think they have that luxury. They got to sell a ton of those things to get developers to develop for it. Like yeah. they might have like a few games that come out right away, and one of them will be some kind of like demo disc, right? We've all seen that, where it's got like six little games just to demo the technology. Maybe there'll be one or two games that 
incorporate it. Yeah. But I'd be surprised if we see like a big AAA title that uses it because that's a lot of money to bet on selling an accessory for a console, which is never ever successful. Especially virtual reality, it's unproven. Like this is a brand new market too. I mean, the very first like commercial virtual reality headset just came out, the Samsung Gear VR for mobile phones, which I got to tell you, I think looks amazing. I really want to get that. I'm a total believer in VR now, and I think the technology is there. I think it looks incredible, but that price point is going to be the killer. And if developers are really risking or wanting to make games for this thing, if they believe in it, because without the software, this thing is never going to take off. Like anything. Well, that, yeah. If we take into account what we've wanted as gamers since the very beginning is virtual reality. Uh, I remember the first time I played Punch Out in the arcade, and I saw L- Little Mac, and he was a green wire frame. I was like, it looks like VR. It's what I like. Playing old games like Tempest, where it was big polygons moving through the sky, it felt like a virtual reality simulator. We've all wanted to live in a game world. We've always wanted to experience. That's really, to me, the peak of gaming, to actually be able to open up a door, walk into a world, not just be on a screen. It's what we all innately want. I believe that every hardcore gamer, everybody who likes playing video games, would much rather enjoy their game and actually be in it than actually watch it on the screen. The issue is whether or not a developer can make that happen. So... If they can actually convey that to us in a way that it would be really, it's going to be hard for them anyway to uh, advertise this because you can't really show on a screen a commercial for a VR game and people really get what it is. It's I, you know the way you do it is you put you just do like a person on a green screen and then just like him like have you it know, running around. That's the only know, way like, you can kind of convey it. Yeah, inside the game, but I, I don't know. Like I think that people want this, but I don't know. How, how many do you think they got to sell to make it worthwhile for like, you know, a big developer to make a game? Because you get the thing is with VR, from everything I've read and heard about it so far, is that you can't really adapt games to it. You have to design them from the ground up ground to up, take yeah. advantage. Otherwise, you run into real problems with motion sickness and uh, you know all sorts of problems like that. Yep. Uh, so. Like to get a triple A game, I, I think we're going to start seeing smaller developers, like indie developers, who are taking advantage of this stuff. And I think we're going to see that more on the PC side, not on the PlayStation side. So I don't know. I'm kind of I'll be buying one. I'll be honest with you, because I've you know I've been looking forward to this for forever, but I'm I'm not real sure about it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not so sure that it's going to work out. I've bought plenty of accessories that. Flopped 32x Sega CD. Oh God! You know, <laughs> you know like Menacer. Yeah. Uh, you know how, how many of them? You know, it's just never been. Unless you pack that thing in the box, there's just never the. Well, there's yeah. never the sell-through rate to make it attractive to develop for. This is what they need to do. Okay, they need to have the pro- the PlayStation Virtual Reality or PlayStation VR in its own box, and it needs to come with a disc, and that disc needs to be a very well-crafted game that they've taken over a year and a half to make, and it needs to be called The Carnival. Where you're able, it's, it's kind of like a demo set, but you can walk around the carnival, you can get on Ferris wheel, you can get on roller coasters, you can go through the, the maze house, you can go through the haunted house. That's the perfect atmosphere to really capture that feeling of, wow, I'm really here. Because that's something that every human being has done. Every person who, who's been to the carnival or to the, the theme park really enjoyed it. And so that's something everyone can relate to. So men, women, old, young, they've all been on roller coasters to actually be on one that looks semi-realistic and you're on it and you feel that vertigo as you're going down and going up. Yeah. That's going to be really awesome. That and sounds people, like a puke fest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of puke buckets. But, Maybe but we'll people, put a puke bucket too. But I, I, I think that... Yeah, that a little be, for your bucket. <laughs> yeah. Underneath, yeah. This is but amazing. <laughs> <laughs> This is the coolest thing I've ever. <laughs> Somebody set some fire right now. <laughs> but I'm thinking, thinking that's how you something. advertise it. Comes with a free <laughs> bucket. <laughs> you don't want to advertise. Buy one today. <laughs> that would be an amazing tech awesome. demo. That would be awesome. Yeah. I, I think All something right. like that needs to go with it. You know, I think that if they if they release something that everybody can relate to, everybody likes it. I hear that uh, PlayStation VR's motion sickness is not that bad. So hopefully they get that thing squared away and you're, you're able to experience these kind of these experiences from the comfort of your own home. Say, I'm going to the fucking park. Leave me alone. 
put your headset on. Your wife's, God damn, you didn't take the trash out, motherfucker. And you're on the ride, just going straight down, have no clue what she's talking about. Fuck Is that the what your wife's to you? You never get further away. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I had one more prediction, but I forgot. I forgot because it kind of. Oh, my other prediction uh, for Play- PlayStation Experience is that we get a release date for uh, The Last Guardian. Oh, do you think that's. Man, I feel like that could possibly be a spring title. I have a feeling that would be like a June, July game, maybe even a little before that. That game has been developed so long, Robbie. Development hell, it could come out tomorrow. I mean, it's been de- in development since how old? How old you know? really? Since you were like four, they've been developing this game, Robbie. So who knows how far they've gotten? But it's it's a PlayStation centric centered game. It's not. Yeah, so you're a jumbled game. robot right now, Jesus. <laughs> I'll be I think it's you, Robbie. Not him. <laughs> oh God, you bite me. Yeah, you guys are both getting blurry for me. Never mind. <laughs> All right, so, so, so is on. it me or him, Briar? It's yes, yeah, Robbie. Uh, Bioshock. Okay, bro. Don't you try my internet, Robbie. Bioshock is unquestionably a permanent franchise, according to Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick. So there's going to be another Bioshock game confirmed. This is another prediction, actually. I bet you anything, 2K Marin is developing this right now. Because they made Bioshock 2. They haven't released a game in a couple of years. Guaranteed, this game is being marked on right now. And what do you want? You want, a new Bio- you want Bioshock in like a new location? You want an, uh, a return to. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, or would you like... I you want something new. I don't know what they would do, though. Like, I have no idea. I well, mean, there's, really, there's really only two atmospheres that human beings can exist in. and it, Well, there's one atmosphere. It's air. So, in the first Bioshock... Well, you can, it could be a ship in space. I guess that would work, but... For me, the very first Bioshock was the only one space. that kept that feeling. The final the frontier. frontier. <laughs> <laughs> These, These are, are the voyages of the Star Trek. <laughs> Oh my god, the USS Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> oh man, alright Kirk. Um, yeah, I, if, if I had to pick one of the worlds they've been in, I really think Bioshock 3 was off, Infinite was awesome, but I yeah, love cool. the, I love the feeling of being underwater in the very first one. To me that, it's, well, it's like I'm claustrophobic, and that game really made me feel that way in certain places. Yeah. You see water seeping through the cracks, and the areas are getting flooded. To me that was really awesome. And the first Bioshock game, believe it or not, scared the holy shit out of me, man. Yeah, it was a cool game. It I don't really know, man. Like, the problem here is that the guy who created Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite is gone. Ken Levine. He's off, yeah. yeah, he's off doing his own thing. So, other than slapping Bioshock on another game, what's what's Bioshock about this? Oh yeah, well, they're gonna have they're gonna have perks know. that you know give you special powers probably, and. You know, what's really... Uh, this doesn't get me excited at all. It's kind of like the whole Metal Gear Solid conundrum. You know? Yeah. I just don't know what they do with this. Like, I honestly have no idea what... Where would they take it next? next? Like, would they do some crazy thing where it's like, oh, the world's exploded, and like, they're, like, deep in the crest of the Earth, and there's, like, a city there or something? I mean, that's the no. idea, I thought. I'm like, a what good, if... You can that's just, a pretty good idea. <laughs> they're, like, inside the Earth's crust, yeah, and there's, like, a city underground, and, like, yeah. there's... Oh, this heat pressure, and they have to build like these giant metal structures. Like, I think that would be interesting. Imagine, right. take imagine, two. You're welcome. There you go. Yeah. Imagine, imagine being me. the perspective of a big daddy. You're a big daddy who kind they of. We already did that. Oh, well, infinite, yeah. All right. I'm no, they did that in Bioshock 2, didn't it? Yeah, didn't you do that at the end of Bioshock 1? Become a big daddy? Yeah, Briar. It's been. How, how, Robbie, it's been since Robbie was three. Been, uh, <laughs> what's that? Daddy, can I yeah. play Bioshock? Sure, Robbie, go ahead and play, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the age jokes work both ways. We haven't seen this happen yeah, before, Robbie. have we? No, I know. I used to be young the man. age jokes, but now I'm getting my own medicome. It's called <laughs> right A little taste of your own medicine. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have no idea how Robbie talks shit to me and Briar for being old. Pre-show every day, constantly. The dude is ruthless too. Like he cleans <laughs> it up once he's on the air. Like he's, he's nice. like a nice, you know, nice, easygoing guy. But I'm telling you, you turn off the live switch, man. We go off air. This dude is it's ruthless. Rat. He is. I have a nice guy. Unbelievable. 
Right before, the nice. show, right before the show started today, Robbie said, let me get my last curse out of the way. Let's get the show started, you old bastards. I said, that's not yeah. bad. He digs I, deep, I, I too, man. That. He digs deep. Like, the shit he says hurts for a long time. Yeah. So what's a corn? Mr. <laughs> Gamer, what's a corn? You said you had a corn on your foot? I'm too young to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty nice. That's what matters. I don't care what you old people say. <laughs> That's the Robbie we know. Bring it up. <laughs> All right, guys. I think this is going to wrap up the show. Anybody else got anything Wait. they want to get? Go ahead. We didn't discuss the uh, Steam Machines. I know everybody's been so hyped about them. I mean, they came out. Everyone was talking about them. Yeah. Right, guys? You got one for sure. I mean, Steam Machines are everywhere. No doubt about it. Yeah, they're I like at every store because nobody's buying them. <laughs> I am totally sarcastic. No, the... Did you guys even know the Steam Machines came out the other week, like yeah. a couple weeks ago? Yeah. It is like the biggest fart in the wind I've ever seen for any product ever. Like, dead. Nothing on arrival. Just silence. The, uh, I, I mean, I, I looked into them, and there's nothing about them that seems too exciting. I don't like the controller that they're shipping, um, and I don't like the hardware that they're shipping. It's like, so what's really the point of buying this thing? They tried to create this thing in between a console and a PC. They tried to get PC gaming to the living room, but they failed. They really failed with the core point of a Steam machine is to make it more accessible and to make it easier for consumers to get a PC in the living room. problem with this is there's tons of different versions. Some of them can range from like $500 to $6,000. You're confusing the consumers right away, and first of all, it's a PC. You're going to need to upgrade it. This thing is basically a PC. Like, why would I go with the Steam? And Steam OS, too. So it always, what I've always wanted, I've always wanted a console that I have to edit the registry on. It's like my dream come true. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Oh, you know, I really like the PS4, but I don't have to install drivers for it, and that sucks. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be really awesome when you're a Steam machine, you're in the middle of a game, and all of a sudden you get a virus pop up on the screen. <laughs> What's going on? Some, some porn probably on your screen. Oh, shit. Oh, well, now we're talking, actually. Virus <laughs> <laughs> yeah. going to the store as soon as the show's over. It's Steam Machine, you say, huh? <laughs> no, no, we're going to call it Steam. I honestly see no purpose for a Steam Machine. It doesn't do... It tries to create this balance between console and PC. It fails. I think it horribly fails. Like, there's no purpose for this thing. I was really rating up on the Steam machines, and I honestly, I don't see a reason to own one. Just buy a PC if you want it that bad. There's no convenience here, it, especially with Steam OS. Like, it's not the, like the OS runs games better or it's better. It runs games worse than Windows 10. That's a fact. And it's a Linux-based operating system, so you're not even getting the full catalog of Steam games to play on there. Like, it's so limited in their vision. Like, it's just... It doesn't feel like it's a finished product yet. They don't know what they're doing with this thing. They yeah, need more time. I can't honestly think of a reason to buy one for myself. I mean, if I want to play a PC game, I'd rather play it on a PC. I'm just going to buy a new PC, yeah. Like, it's just... I don't see a place in this thing. And the, another thing, too, the Steam Link... It pretty much kills the Steam Machine right there because you can stream your PC games onto a TV. Isn't that the point of getting a Steam Machine is playing it on your TV? Well, it's pretty much redundant by this $50 device that the same company made. Valve, like, mm. what are they thinking? I, I don't know where they came it. from. With I'd get stupid. upset with you, Robbie, but I just can't I can't yeah. muster up the, the oh. enough to care. <laughs> Oh, like, I just don't care enough to like muster up the anger. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <sighs> no, nah, I, don't don't care. Care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but it's like, um, like we're, I don't know what they thought for these things. I, I was looking at them. I was thinking maybe I'd do, I'd do one. But like uh, everything I looked at said, this is kind of underpowered PC hardware. Yeah. You're paying a lot for it compared to if you just bought a PC. The controller blows. The experience isn't that great. So what the fuck? Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I remember, like, there's no I remember reason. When they first talked about the release of the Steam Machine, Briar was actually on board with. It. I remember. You yeah, know, I can see. I can see a use case for it definitely, yeah. but yeah, not but, the way they implemented it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before we end the show, Briar, I want to ask you a question. Now, I heard you say yeah. you're looking forward to uh, after the holidays uh, grabbing Tomb Raider, right? Yeah, man. Now, have you played uh, Halo Five yet? No, I have not. Which of the two or would be on your list to try first? Uh, Rise of Tomb Raider? I'm more excited about Tomb Raider. 
same here, because those are two games I really want to play. I was playing last week, I played a few hours of the original Tomb Raider. It's like, wow, this is so fucking great. Yeah. And I know Halo, I know the world, I know what the experience is all about, and then I hear a few of the rumblings in the world about Halo 5. I'm definitely going to get Rise of Tomb Raider first as well. Yeah, I, I really didn't like Halo 4. I didn't like where they brought the franchise. I'm interested more to play that multiplayer of Halo 5 than the single player. Yeah. Uh, but Tomb Raider, I'm really looking forward to. I like th- I like that Tomb Raider reboot an awful lot, and I've heard that this one is way better in every way. Yeah. I definitely say you guys should go with uh, Tomb Raider because, like, I've played through the Halo 5 campaign, and it's fun, but it's got to be the worst Halo campaign yet. I'm not saying it's bad. It was really enjoyable, but this story is just not there because every Halo campaign has had great gameplay and great story. Like, it's had both those things. This is just, oh, it's fun to play. It well, just feels like more of the same. The multiplayer is fantastic, but Rob, the single player is fantastic. The, the, the thing that really kind of turned me off about this Halo before I even got started is because I, I really invested a lot of, I guess, excitement into the trailers that were, were released before the game was, you know, released. Uh, the whole Commander Lot versus uh, Master Chief. Yeah. Idea to me was like, oh my god, you get to play as both of them. Who's the good one? Who's the bad one? All that really kind of fed my desire to want to play the game, and then you find out none of that happens. To me, that was a huge lie. The game doesn't. You never. They never go against each other. Uh, and to me, that that kind of sullied my thought process on what the what I should expect. Because what they told us we were going to get, what they showed us we were going to get, doesn't even exist. I like so Halo was, when Budgie developed it. Yeah. 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 That's pretty much where it ends for me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> you need the bungee man. Yeah, all right. So, uh, guys, you, anything else? Because I'm getting ready to go uh, go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap this one up. Any anybody got some closing thoughts? Uh, I'm going to be doing some nice things on my channel this week. Like I said, I'm going to be giving away some Xbox One games. So if you guys, that's nice. Right there. Yeah. I, I I they're kind of. Taking up space, you know, it's the size of a playing card and all that space, I need to get rid of it. It's time. So I'm going to be doing my giveaway of uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Unity on Xbox One because I love Xbox and I want you to have Xbox. But uh, just look forward to more videos on my channel. You know, try to keep up with the news. Last of Us gameplays, I got 5 million of those just to upload random. But that's all, all for me this week. Robbie, what about you? I gotta be real honest. I'm probably not gonna be doing much this week because I have finally gotten back on track with doing my schoolwork, and I've been really investing into that. Like I haven't even played games as much this week because I've been working on school because I have to get better at that. And um, <laughs> I might be releasing a video or two though. But school is my main focus right now. It's important to me. Good. You gotta take care of business. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I do. What I gotta do. I, I was just looking. I think I've released five videos in the last two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. So actually, I'm almost done with like my my house projects and the holidays. You know, Thanksgiving slowed me down a little bit. So I'm I'm looking to get back into it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to putting out some videos because I got a lot to talk about, but I haven't had a place to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> look out. Oh shit. <laughs> look out. <laughs> Unsubscribe because you're about to see a lot of videos in your subscription feed. <laughs> <laughs> about to spam that sub feed. <laughs> oh, oh shit, man! All right, I'm gonna end it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thanks, you, thank you, guys, for showing up, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>